The Anderson Healy Show continues now here on the Sun Devil Radio Network, along with Arizona State Athletic Director Ray Anderson. I'm Tim Healy, the radio play-by-play voice of the Sun Devils, and we're glad you're with us this week. Coming off a pair of hard-fought five-set losses at Oregon State this past weekend, the Arizona State women's volleyball team returns home to the friendly confines of Desert Financial Arena this coming Friday and Sunday, where they will host the 15th-ranked UCLA Bruins. And here with us uh, this week to fill us in on her 2021 Sun Devil squad is Arizona State's fourth year head coach and a former All-American and national champion at the University of Washington, our good friend Sonia Tomasevich. Sonia, it's great to see you again. It's been a while since we visited with you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. You know, everything considered, Tim, it's been it's been a challenging year. I'm just happy that we're playing volleyball and I'm happy that, you know, we're out there and getting to do what we love to do. And um you know, obviously the results are not what we were hoping for at this point, but, you know, considering how young this squad is at this, you know, at this point of, you know, their development, and I wasn't expecting, you know, a mm-hmm. lot of um, wins in those kind of situations when you're playing against experienced opponents. So uh, it's just growing pains and we'll get there. Before we uh, delve into your team, what have you found to be the most challenging aspect of coaching a collegiate uh, volleyball team in the midst of this pandemic? Oh my God, it's just, it's so everything. It's like, you know, just you know, managing, playing through the fear, you know, just, you know, fear of bringing them back to the families, fear of, you know, hurting somebody you love and, you know, and um, playing with the masks, you know, the players don't understand why, you know, we're the only sport that still plays the masks on. And so they don't understand why. And I'm like, well, the alternative is not playing. So what would you guys rather? And they're like, keep the mask on. I'm like, well, then let's play with the mask on. Let's, you know, let's get what we can. And so I think it's just managing, you know, not having 942, not having just the usual, the normal stuff. But, you know, I don't even know. I I don't hope we're going to get back to normal at some point. But, you know, right now we're just enjoying Every day we get to play against somebody else on the other side. And every day we get to practice. We're just happy that we get to do that because we've been in a place where we didn't do any of that for five months. And that was awful. And so we don't want to get back there again. How different, how strange is it for you? I think most of our listeners probably know that typically in uh, the collegiate athletics calendar, women's volleyball is a fall sport, but yours was moved to spring this year because of COVID. I know sports are so much, oftentimes a matter of routine, and this took you significantly out of your routine. What's that been like for you and your girls, Sonia? I, you know, I wouldn't say, I, I mean, I really enjoyed having fall to train the team, and that was fun. You know, just having, like, we normally get two and a half weeks before we get to go on the court and compete. So we don't get to, like, like usually our team doesn't get reps they need to get until the middle of the season. And so... This was nice. This was good. Uh, we did have some changes on our roster since we started in the fall. So that's kind of what, what also didn't help uh, with everything. But, you know, it was nice having some of these young, talented players in the gym early and having to like the ability to work with them and train them before we get out there and compete. The other thing is like, you know, we took away completely preseason in volleyball. So we're playing only non like conference games, only Pac-12 teams. Mm-hmm. And that is a dog fight every night. You know, you don't get to like have an easy game. You don't get to work your way in. You don't get to build your confidence. Like you know, your first match is going straight against top, you know, teams in the country, then, you know, it's gonna be tough. And so that's what's you know, the competition part of it, it's not hasn't been ideal, but I really enjoy the development part of it, the being the ability to train. What has it been like you now are not only playing an all Pac twelve schedule, but you're playing the same opponent twice in the same weekend you had back-to-back uh five set matches and on successive days if i'm not uh, mistaken at oregon state and you'll be playing ucla and it's been it's like that every weekend what's it like to play the same team twice in such a short turnaround i actually enjoy it tim i think it's uh, it's good and i you know i was talking to some other pac-12 coaches and you know, we we think that we, we stumbled upon something we might like in the future. Um, I hope, hmm. you know, most of us feel the same way, but, you know, it's going to save us money. It's going to save us time. It's going to, you know, it just, I mean, yes, it's not ideal because you might have somebody who's hurt on the weekend. You're playing somebody who's, you know, who's not as good. So you might get hurt and lose a match or two, but I really enjoyed this. I think it's, you know, it's like, you know, I tell the girls usually before the second game, it's same people, same time. See you guys there. You know, it's like, 
we you know the same th- people on the other side the same people on this side let's see who's going to be better tomorrow and um i really enjoy it you know i, I think it's good for uh, for us to play same team twice i mean i think they do that in baseball right or softball they do yeah. that in some other sports and so mm-hmm. you know i think there's it, it's it's not a bad thing and you know it could save us money and budgetary it's it's good and especially with covid being a thing i think it's really important that we all kind of do what we can and you know and pitch in our part and so we're saving money because we're not tra- changing hotel we're not traveling between cities i think it's, it's going to be a good thing yeah and in, in normal years uh, volleyball for instance would play at ucla one weekend and then a couple of weeks later ucla would come here instead you're playing the yeah. two games in one venue you're playing half your league's opponents at home half on the road and uh, you're right and i think in the post-pandemic world sonia there's going to be a lot of the ways that uh, college sports does its business that are going to change based on the way it has had to change and morph during the pandemic i i mean you know there's so many good things that came out of this COVID thing if you look at it that way you know i just think there's so many things that we didn't even think of before we didn't think we should do it you know for whatever reason so I think there's so many so many things we can take with us in the post-pandemic um, life, and and you know take it with us and and learn from this, and just you know hopefully it can stay with us. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about your team for a while now. The current record one and seven, I don't think really tells the story of how competitive that your squad has been this year. In fact, uh, uh, four of your matches have gone the full five sets, including both last weekend at Oregon State. And as you said, you're playing in an extremely challenging conference to begin with in the Pac-12. What have been your main takeaways or your overview of the team's first eight matches? Oh, man, it's just young, immature, scared. You know, it's like, it's just, it's a lot, you know, and uh, I think this is the conference of champions and it's, it's, you're playing against great players every night and, you know, you can't sleep up. You can't, you know, you can't get complacent for, you know, one or two plays in a row. You can make a mistake, but you can't get complacent because when you get complacent, people are going to catch you sleeping and then they're going to, you know, they're going to punish you. And um, I think um, this, we could have been sitting here in seven and one at this point. I mean, I really truly believe that there was only one match. We had no chance, like we stood no chance. And that was a Utah on the second night when we lost in three. Outside of that, I think we hung in with every match and we had like a lead and we just needed to close. Um, and we didn't do that. And so just, you know, this year having the team as is right now and, you know, we just learned that there's another injury on the team from one of our seniors. She's going to be out for a little while. And, you know, uh, Claire Kovinsky and Andrea Mitrovic um, deciding to move on and doing what's best for them and their lives in the moment when, you know, really wasn't ideal for the team. It was just... It was a lot, but you know, I'm always glass half full person. So I'm thinking like, okay, we're here. We are in the spring. We're getting these reps against the best teams in the country. So when the fall comes and rolls around, we're going to be really good. We're going to have those reps. We're going to know what it feels like and we can pull out of our experience and go from there. And your squad opened the season with a stunning upset win at then eighth ranked uh, Washington, your alma mater and the Huskies are currently ranked 10th in the nation. So Clearly, your players have the talent it takes to succeed against top-notch competition. It just seems like it's a matter of gaining that confidence and experience, isn't it? Yeah, team. I mean, we we literally have a team full of freshmen and sophomores. I mean, on our current team right now, current roster, no, there's only one player that's consistently played in the past. It's Megan Beatty, and you know she's out now for a while. So um, we are gonna, you know, we're not gonna have her, you know, next couple weeks. And- you know, we literally have, you know, we have Iman Isanovich who's having, you know, on and off like nights, but she, you know, she's having good season considering, you know, she's being a sophomore. Um, we have Marta Levinska who is, you know, very promising freshman. Um, she got a freshman of the week first week after Washington. You know, we have Ella Snyder who is dealing a really doing a really good job setting as a freshman also who surprised us and kind of took the spot away. And, you know, so we just young it's really young and it's like you know when it's kind of like it just it, it's i don't know how to explain it. like you know i wish i could buy it and like give it to them like you know and i just know i can't skip through those steps i can't skip skip through the experience skip through the pain you know like we just they have to learn and you know and we have them for a long time so that's what's going to be fun <laughs> it's not like one and done they're going to be here for a while this has been the 
the most talented team, team I've coached as a head coach. So I'm really excited wow. about that. 